Hello friends, I hope you had a good holiday break and you are ready for a new year of anamorphics, weird lenses and staying on a budget. On today's episode, I'll show you Laowa's nanomorph zooms in a set of two lenses and the world's first on a budget sort of anamorphic zooms. Anamorphic zooms are a technical challenge and with all the technical optical challenges, I'm not surprised Laowa was the first to jump in the arena. Here's some of the fun stuff you can do with these nanomorphs. I have two lenses here. One goes from 28 to 55 mil and the other from 50 to 100 mil, both with pretty much two times zoom ratio in 1.5 times anamorphic squeeze. They have a constant T2.9 aperture, slower than the 2.4 primes and effectively cover the entire prime nanomorph range. So let's find out if they're an alternative, an addition or a replacement for the primes. They are fairly lightweight for what they deliver at 1500 grams each or 3.3 pounds, which stays in line with the rest of the nanomorphs. Their size is also pretty handy, just under 20 centimeters or seven and a half inches. The default mount is PL with optional mounting E, R, F, Z, X, and L mounts. I've switched everything I have to PL and I urge you to do the same in favor of stability and rentability. Each lens comes with a foot support which I highly recommend as their size and weight combined are a very easy cause for Keystone. They cover Super 35 sensors with an image circle of 31.9 millimeters. Focus throw is consistent at 270 degrees of rotation, at the end of which the 28 to 55 reaches a minimum focus of 45 centimeters or a foot and five inches, while the 50 to 100 mil taps out at 80 centimeters or two foot seven inches. Both lenses feature focus scales in metric and imperial, and everything in these lenses is manual. And we have three standard geared rings with matching positions in both lenses, so you can mount your motors on each one and never touch them again. Another great feature for these zooms is they don't change size while zooming or focusing, and the front does not rotate. This is very important if we're using a matte box. And if you want regular filters, these zooms give you standard 77 mm front threads. They're also par focal, meaning that you shouldn't need to adjust your focus ring whenever you change the zoom. If you're having issues with par focality, you need to adjust your shims and the manual has instructions on how to do that. Last but not least, you can also throw Laowa's adapter in front of these two for two times anamorphic squeeze and a lot more character. Unfortunately, I was rushing to get this video done on time and didn't have a chance to test it out. Lau is releasing these zooms on crowdfunding and you can find the link in the description. There, they're selling a single lens at $3,000 while the two lens set goes for $5,800. Considering the full set of Nanomorph Prime sells for $6,800, there isn't that big of a budget difference between all the primes or the two zooms. The two lens kit comes in a nice hard case with slots for tools, 
shims, and replacement mounts. In sharpness land, they're great performers across the range. I found they resolve pretty well even wide open, being a touch softer at the wide end at 28mm, and also the long end at 100mm. Performance becomes much more constant when you stop down to T4, and I don't think I'd stop them down further at the risk of losing anamorphic character. Folks tend to be more picky when it comes to zooms uh, for focus breathing, because focus breathing is nothing more than a focal length change. These two show some breathing, as you can see, uh, when you rack from infinity to mins and backwards on all focal lengths, but when are you having a shot that racks from mins to infinity? And as we stared into those focus breathing tests, it was also easy to notice that the nanomorph zooms feature some pincushion distortion. The edge bending is much more noticeable at the wide end and gets subtler and subtler as we move towards longer focal lengths. Again, this is a very easy fix in post to either straighten it out or turn this into barrel distortion. Continuing the nanomorph rules, you can pick from amber, blue, or silver, white, flares, which is the color that I chose for these ones. The flares are subtle and still quite line-like, without the richness I expected from a zoom flare, with all of its elements for light to bounce around. Personally, I've never been a fan of zoom since I got started in film almost 15 years ago. I always found the image quality to be too compromised, or the price to be too high, or parfocality to be a myth, so I've stayed away from them. These ones are changing my mind on the topic. They're super reliable and flexible, and I have tons of options between 28 and 100 mil. It's pretty easy to know which range I need, and it's super fun to push in or to pull out during the shots. T2.9 is super workable as maximum aperture, and close focus is also pretty impressive for anamorphics. At times, I wish these two would be a single lens, but I also know that is asking a lot. All the cinema standards, mount, gears, ring placement, static front, make these into great options for anamorphic documentary filmmaking. I always heard the criticism that it's too hard to do docs with anamorphics because you lose so much time swapping lenses, so I'm happy that we got these two alternatives for that market. I guess I can't really answer if the zooms are better than the primes, but I can say that for what I do, which is mainly YouTube, the zooms give me something special and the versatility for quick adjustments. If I wanted to do only narrative and gimbals and that sort of thing, like I did for the telephoto nanomorphs, then I'd probably be happier with the primes. I hope you learned something fun here today, and thank you for hanging out. See you on the next one. Chit of Heavens, out.